Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036 0703 768 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Partnering for life and ministry as couples in ministry. Introduction. God established the Christian home for the divine purpose in the lives of his servants to be fulfilled. He said, I will make a help meet for him and not trouble in his flesh. Most couples only struggle through life to stay together many times with troubles and conflicts. In this family clinic, we shall particularly focus on partnering together as husband and wife for life and then for ministry. We shall particularly study how a couple can deeply and truly labor upon themselves and then together labor on other lives in ministry and yet remain ever one and ever committed unto each other without anything or man putting them asunder. Though a study, we shall seek in-depth practical discussions between ourselves, citing real-life situations with all openness and absolute trust. Now from the introduction that we have read, that has set the agenda for our meeting, isn't it? And the agenda is that we want to look at the matter of partnering together. The matter of coupling together. And now we can deeply and truly labor upon ourselves. And then together uh, labor on other people that God may bring our way. Beginning with our children and others that God may bring to us without anything coming in between. So I think you will start by looking at the biblical basis of partnering as we read on. Then we take it on and on. Yes? Go ahead. Again, we must study the biblical basis and principle of partnering between a husband and wife. What is the purpose and goal of this relationship? Uh, number one, none other was made to fit into a man's life as a help meet for him except a woman. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 to 25. Right, let's open Genesis 2. 18 to 25. I can read. Can I read? Okay. Genesis 2, 18 to 25. And the Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him an help made for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he will call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam... There was not found and help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, 
and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. You want us to read 1 Corinthians 11 as well? 1 Corinthians 11, 8 to 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 8 to 12. I'll read that quickly also. <clears throat> For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. Yes. Discuss the implication of this in understanding the biblical basis of partnering together in life and then in fulfilling God's call. We are trying to look at um, the fact that what God did was to make a woman a help meet, a help fit for the man according to uh, Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 that we have read. There is a basis for marriage. There is a basis for a man and his wife to partner together. And it is that at the beginning, when the Lord instituted marriage, he made the woman to be a help, meet for him. And I think the, the first thing we need to note there is that the, it was the Lord that instituted marriage. It was not a man's idea. It was the Lord. It was not Adam himself who said, now I need somebody to marry. It was the Lord who started the whole thing. And it was also the Lord who said, I will make a help fit for him. So in terms of the making of the man and the making of the woman, it all comes from the Lord. And the, the Lord who made them, he, he made the man and then he made the woman to be a helper, fit for him. In that case, we are also seeing then that um, there is a work to be done which the woman is meant to fit into, to be able to help her husband. Because if there is nothing doing, you don't talk about a helper. There is a work before you will talk about somebody helping the other. And uh, earlier on in that chapter, you will discover that God already commissioned the man and gave him a work to do. Before he now came and said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a help meet for him. And that help that God made was the woman. So the first thing we are noting there is that there is a basis for their relationship. Maybe I could, uh, coming from another angle here, and then we can... Uh, receive your own input at this point. The first thing that uh, was striking to me as we read Genesis 2:18 to 25 was the fact that the Bible says 
God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. That it is not good. If God says something is not good, what do you feel about it? Eh? If God says something is not good, then it is not good. Isn't it? Now we saw that ever before, God had made man and he said, all the things that God had made is very good. That was the conclusion of chapter 1. But in chapter 2, we are seeing God saying, it is not good for the man to be alone. So we are going to be quickly discuss, I mean, discovering that in the purpose of God, God himself is saying, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. So I'm discovering that when God was going to respond to the need that the man should not be alone, and he said I will make a help for him, that help actually was the woman. Is that okay? So it looked clear that in God's definition, the woman is not a trouble. Is that true? The woman is not a trouble to the man. Was not meant to be so. She was not meant to be the woe of man. You know, you meet some people, they say woman means woe of man. Now, those that have very negative attitude towards women, they will say a woman is a necessary evil. Some say a woman is the unavoidable problem that a man must have. Some other time, when you go further, they said uh, the woman is the trouble in the flesh of a man. Have you listened to such things before? Huh. But God did not call the woman a trouble. He did not call the woman a woe. God did not call the woman the necessary evil. He did not call the woman the unavoidable problem. What did he call the woman? Eh? He calls the woman a help. A help that is fit. A help that is meat. You know, for the man. So maybe the first thing I thought we should try to discuss is what exactly does he mean actually to be a help you know, for the man? What was the help? I think we should discuss that. You should throw light into what is it. Why, how should a woman be to her husband? Uh, more practically here. And if there are issues to raise, we can take input from the floor. Um, as I said before, uh, the first thing to note is that if there is no work, there is no need for a help. If a man is not meant to achieve something in the purpose of God here on earth, there is no need for a help for such a man. And that will throw a challenge onto, onto us as men that the earlier we find the purpose of God for our lives, the better even for our marriage. So that's the first thing to note there. There is no need for a help for a man who is doing nothing. The second thing is that a help means an assistance. I hope I'm correct. An assistance. It means somebody who is 
meant to alleviate some of the burdens, some of the load that the man is carrying. It means somebody who is meant to contribute the grace of God in her life to, to alleviate some of the burdens of the man, to share part of the load, to share part of the, 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 the burden that the man is carrying. And the two of them bearing the burden together makes the work faster. So you mean the woman is not particularly married to consume her husband? No. <laughs> now, no, you see, the reason why I'm asking is that, you know, several women, they are looking for the man that will take care of them. They are looking for the man who will pay their bills. Eh? Please, let's talk together now. <laughs> and when they say, I, 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 I'm looking for a man, I want a man who is going to be responsible for me. So, I thought you would like to speak into, uh, what does that mean, actually? Because if a woman is meant to be a help, that means she comes to take away part of the body. If the man is carrying three loads, she comes to do what? Carry to take one. one of it. So it means she's not particularly coming into this man's life to, to eat him. She has not come to eat him. And she's not coming to the man in order to add to his uh, Load. His load. I thought there is need for a clear definition of that here. I think it's clear because is it, is if, it clear? If um, let me make an example. If you ask a small baby to come and help you carry this table, you want to carry it together with a two-year-old girl. For example, I don't think that will be a helper. You, have to carry the you will have to carry the load and carry the baby. So the baby say, carry me first. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact is that to be a helper itself means that the helper herself has enough stamina to be able to alleviate part of the, the load that the man is carrying. It's not a load. It's not a burden to the man. So the wife is not a load to the man. She is supposed to actually be a contributor. Not a burden, but a burden bearer. So, do you have anything to say to this? And let me also in? add uh -huh. that we are studying from Genesis because um, when, you are, when you are having a lot of counterfeits, all around. The best thing to do is to go and study the original. Then you'll be able to note the counterfeits. If we get to the bank and you get some notes, some runs that are counterfeit, you may not be able to know it except it is, you know, you study the original to know the features of the original before you can get what is wrong with the counterfeit and be able to pick it out. Actually, Jesus in Matthew chapter 19 was telling the Pharisees when they said, is it not right for a man to divorce his wife for every cause? He told them, he said, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And when he said, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning? It means we need to go back to the beginning where marriage was made. We don't have to continue to press on with the aberration with the panabited version of marriage. That's why we need to start from the book of Genesis to see how God made it at the beginning so that we can be able to take note of the aberrations and return to God's original concept of marriage. Since he is the manufacturer, we need to read the manual. 
Praise the Lord. Thank you. Now, is there any input you want to make here? A question before we go ahead. What we are trying to do is to find what is the, what is, what am I in my husband's life to do? That's the question we have been trying to find out. Because unless we understand the basis of the relationship, there may be a difficulty in knowing how it runs. Did you understand the issue we are dealing with now? What is my wife in my life to do? Did you understand the question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, my contribution is uh, I will be moving from the, the premise that uh, uh, Sister Shade has just said that when there has to be an assistant or assistance when there's some work to do. Mm. And in here in the, in the Bible it's said in the Garden of Eden. Um, it means there's, there was work in that garden. I will just bring it a little bit uh, closer to our time. That in the olden days, uh, where we, 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 not, we did not depend on the market to buy food or vegetables, um, men used to go and plow fields. Um, when they come, they come very tired. Um, the first thing that the, uh, the wife used to do is to bring the water for the men to refresh and wash and become fresh and then while the food is getting ready. And I think uh, he used to regain uh, that freshness and then feels at home. I think that that's the basically the first step that I want to end there. Thank you. Okay. He has brought us down to when our fathers used to go to farm and return. Now today, today, when some of you are no more working on the field, <laughs> are you getting me? Now, what is our wife in our lives to do? That's the questions that we are checking. Because we need to, now I you know, we are spoken about the wife being a help. We have not spoken about the man needing a help. Can you help a man who does not need help? Excuse me, you are not answering me. Is it possible to help a man who feels that he does not need your help? There's a hand there. All right, there's one hand here. Yes. Thank you. When the Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone, that will make a helper. In Proverbs 18.22, he also said that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Which means, the wife must be somebody who brings up goodness, you know, into the life of the man. So whoever is going to be a wife, <clears throat> unfortunately, well, some may not, some will just enter into marriage without knowing, but there is work for the woman who goes into marriage. She has to discover, she has to ask God, why am I going there? Because, like the Bible says, she is supposed to bring some goodness into the life of a man. Who, who finds a wife finds a good thing. More like, when I marry, my life is supposed not to be where I am. I'm supposed to move to the next level with my wife. Okay. So a wife is supposed to push the husband to the next level. Is that what we are saying? Eh? All right. Only men are speaking. I need women now. The straight answer is this. It is not good to help a man who is not needed to be helped. You cannot help a helpless. Hmm. It is. <laughs> so now, so we are going to. So maybe some of the problems in many marriages is that many husbands have never felt the need to be helped. Maybe, sincerely speaking, they just see a woman as something to use. But 
we are beginning to note here that it is God himself who is saying that no matter how energetic a man is, that man alone is not good. Are you understanding that now? Even if you think you can go it all alone, when you have finished doing everything that you know how to do alone, God brings the red pen. And what does he do? Not good. Oh my God. You are not getting me at all. When you have done your best, and everyone say, did you do it alone? He said, well, I don't need her. Then the God will just bring his red pen. And what does he do? How does he mark it? How does he mark it? Not good. So, what we want to check this, this afternoon, as we are going a bit further, is this basis that makes it very, very important for me to partner with my wife. Otherwise, what I'm doing no matter how lucrative it appears, the final answer is what? Not good. Not good. We're going to see why it is not good. Hallelujah. Now, there's a question somewhere. A question up. Amen. 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 Jengo mneti kengo kwa ongo mama ke esai choki ndaba kama mamba u mama wa yenze lwento ni ngutiku. Umsebe nzo wake yinto ni nga eseli no tata. Mna inde nifuna kendi konde na msa njo tiku waka singa itenga yinto bana. Nga kengo kwa ongo mamu konu la pekaya wenza ke lo msebe nzi. Galenje lutiku wa ye ufuna ngayu. Asuke utata, asuke akushie apa usenza lo msebe nzi. Asuke emke ayo shala kwe nyinda wonga yasi. Yayo kalomiums itiwa nindu enjalo enkos. My concern and my question is that I need help. I am a wife. I have been called to help here. But the problem is that the person whom I have come to help leaves me. Go and stay away where I don't even know. I am here to help him. The work is here, but he goes away. A man who continues to run away from the helper. <laughs> that every time he goes alone, he can even just go out and for hours, nothing. He returns back home tired. I received directions from and before we wake up, he has gone out again. So much to do, but he doesn't need help. That's a very important question. But before we attack the question, let's take one more input. Yes, there's a sister there. Uh, are there? Yes. Okay. yes. I just wanted to be sure what kind of work are we talking about here? Are we strictly speaking of a man waking up in the morning, going to work and bring money home? Mm -mm. Or are we talking about God's work? Because it could be that um, the man that you have been attached to is not working as in waking up in the morning and bringing money. So mm -hmm. we just need clarity there. Uh, what type of work are we referring to? Okay, thank you. When she introduced the word work, she was simply talking about the totality of what a man was created to achieve on earth. The totality of God's divine purpose for creating a man. What was this man living for? What is he supposed to accomplish in his lifetime? That God is saying it is not good for him to be alone. I will make a help for him. Are you understanding that now? It is more than that he went to farm. And then as he was coming back tired, you give him water. A house girl can do that. Am I right? Uh, if he has enough money and he, 
you could rent a house girl. A house girl can help him to, to fetch water. A house girl can even cook for him to eat. We wanted to go beyond the fact that uh, the woman is a domestic servant. Marriage is more than that you have a woman who is domestic. Are we, are we together now? Marriage is that God is saying that what you are created to be, you cannot fulfill it alone. And that it is not even good for you to be alone. God says, I will make a help meet for him. Meet for him. So, the question is beyond that he wakes up in the morning to go and walk. Because sometimes, honestly speaking, maybe the kind of work he's doing, there's no way the wife can help. Eh? My wife is a medical doctor and I don't know how can I help you do that job that time. Eh? Or, well, she said she's the one to help me. <laughs> I'm not the one to help her at all. All right. So the challenge I'm raising is that we are talking about the totality of what this man is meant for. So maybe the first question that needed to be asked as a, as a couple is, Lord, what is this man meant to be that you are sending me to help him? Do you understand that now? What exactly do you want this my man, my husband, to be that I need to help him? And if he doesn't have a vision for living, does he really need a wife? These are questions. But we are returning, we are going to answer her question when we are tying things together. Yes, someone again is making a point. Yes, go to do me there. A biblical basis of partnering. The last part of that first sentence that says, except a woman. I was thinking that is just any other woman that this, this man can take. But when we read from the book of Genesis, uh, verse 21 and 22, I'm discovering that this woman who is able to assist and alleviate the burdens of this husband or achieving the purpose of God in this husband is the, is the woman that is being made by God. And uh, from there, I am also discovering that this making of this woman, there is also a prior preparation that is being made, which I'm seeing in verse 21, that the, the husband or the man need to sleep for this woman to be able to, to be brought up to him being made by God. Amen. Did you see her now? She's raising a very critical question. That is not just any woman that can be a help to a man. Sometimes if you pick another one's bones, the one that is not the bone of your bone, it will never fit. Eh? Oh my God, you are not? Eh? They are already married. So... <laughs> I shouldn't go about whether you are picking a bone of another bone. You already picked a bone now. <laughs> Did you hear my wife saying, please, don't go backward again. That these people are already married. And the one you have married now is the bone of your bones. Whether he is paining you inside or he is peppering you in your leg, that is your bone. Settle down with it. That's what I'm hearing her say now. Yes, uh, I thought I'm seeing another hand. The, our sister has raised a point, but we'll come to it. Yes. Amen. My question is going to be the addition of the question that has been raised on top. What I want to know is that you are married already, but when the man is abusive, does that man still need a helper? Because really, sometimes you find that in different marriages, there's that problem. But I just want to know, as a young wife, 
that when the man is abusive, does that man still need a helper? I think we need to finish with verse 18 first because these questions are probing into further understanding about verse 18. But maybe to answer that question, the first thing is that um, Hebrews chapter 13 Is it Hebrews 13, 4? That says, Marriage is honorable in all, the bed undefiled, but warmongers and adulterers, God shall judge. Yes. Marriage is honorable in all. God honors marriage, no matter where you contracted it whether in the market or in the dance hall or in the church. Yeah. Once you are married, God honors that marriage. And what to do, especially in problematic marriages like this, is to first remember that you are not the maker. God is the maker. He made the man, he made the woman. And if there is anything wrong with either party what to do what the partner should do is to report to the manufacturer and say lord you are the maker because there is no amount of struggling that you can do to make the man to become what what he should be as a husband or to make the woman to become what she should be as a wife beating your wife will not make her in fact that would harden her the more but if you report to the manufacturer, if you report to the maker, he's still in the process of making up till today. He still makes people up till today. He said, I will make. So when we have difficulties in our marriages, let's not try with our heads, with our understanding, with our you know, arm of flesh to try to make the other person. Let's report to the Lord and start praying about the issue you will soon discover that God will arise and make that partner. Right. Uh, please wait. Before we take the next input, she had read an issue that I thought, maybe if we study the Bible a little, it might answer a few of our questions before we continue to take more practical discussion. Should we try to do that? Let's push the Bible a bit more and see what we can get out of it. Now, <clears throat> in verse 18, God said, I, I will make for him and help meet for him. So, the first word we are noting there is God saying, I, and the passage that um, our brother quoted in Proverbs 18, it says, Whoso uh, finds a wife finds a good thing and has obtained favor from the Lord. Are we together? And Proverbs 19 verse 14 says, Houses and riches are the inheritance of from the fathers. But a prudent wife, a prudent wife is only from the Lord. I think Proverbs also says many men, they will speak and boast about themselves. Is that Proverbs 27 or, or 21? Is it but, eh? Can you read it? Most men will proclaim each his own goodness. But who can find a faithful man? Many men, they will speak big about themselves. Especially when they are proposing to a lady. They will come, they can even buy some, some good things. But when they put the ring inside the finger 
That's when they come with their true color. Isn't it? So the scripture is saying, we don't even depend on what a man says about himself to get a correct husband. A faithful man only comes also from the Lord. We have read Proverbs 20 and verse 6. We have talked about Proverbs 18, 22, 19, 14, and 26. So, we are noting that even though we are now married, the maker of a correct husband is the Lord. The maker of a right wife is also who? The Lord. So, it means then that for this couple to actually progress in their relationship, they must, each of them, look to the Lord, the maker, to do the work in each of their partners. Are we, are we together right now? God is able to make an abusive husband to turn around. And we are beginning to say that we can make him. In the same way, you cannot make a woman that is quarrelsome to change. Beating, scolding, even squeezing your pocket and not leaving money at home does not do the job. God says, I will make for him a help meet for him. Is that all right? Now, but still looking at Genesis chapter 2, I thought we should move into two more issues before we can discuss again. Now, we have noted that out of the ground, the Lord made the beast and everything. But the Bible says, for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. We have been meeting the word a help meet. Praise the Lord. The word in the old King James is a help meet. A help that meet his needs. Not a help mate. Madam, did you understand what I'm reading there? It's not help mate. It's not M-A-T-E. What is it? It's, it's a help meet. A help that fits. They are not mates. Madam, can you tell another ma madam or tell your tell somebody by your side and say, he is not your mate. <laughs> did, did you see? Did you see Buyani doing something like that? <laughs> it's very quick to to say that to Felicia and say <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now what I'm trying to say is that you say mates struggle, mates compete, mates argue because they are mates. But God is not putting mates together. Maybe one of the difficulty in many, many relationships is that right from the beginning, we didn't see it the way the Lord is saying it. I will make for him a help that is what? That is what? That is suitable. A help that meets his need. And it's very critical for husbands to recognize that the woman you marry is the one that meets your need. Praise the Lord. That wife is the one that meets your need. God actually knows your need and is bringing that need to be met in your life by bringing the woman in. Let's see an input here quickly in verse 21 and 22. The Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took one of his ribs 
and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Can you, can you get that picture quickly? God took a rib and you see if you take a bone out it means there is a loophole. Am I right? It means there is a loophole. There is a loophole. But it was covered with the flesh. So from afar off, when the man does like this, you don't see the hole. You will think he's complete. You will think that man is okay. But that man has what? There's a loophole. There's a loophole. But covered. So on the outside, you look at him as complete. How many of you, when you got your, before you married your husband, you thought he was a perfect man? <laughs> Aha. And when you got to marry him, what did you discover? <laughs> eh? Oh my God. You were, you were totally dazed. I said, what? If I know you are like this, when you suddenly discover that ah, 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 there are so many issues here. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, but I want you to see something before we conclude it. Verse 22 now says, And the rib, which rib? Which rib? And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man. Are you getting this now? Made he a woman. I don't know that you get the issue now. What was taken out of this man that made him deformed, so to say? that made him incomplete, that left a loophole under, even though covered. Everybody thinks it's complete, but you suddenly discover that there's something here that is not complete. That's why when it comes to that aspect of his life, he doesn't know what to do. He's confused. Now, the Bible says that rib was what God made into a woman. So, in other words, what was absent in this man was what God used as the basis of constructing the woman. Do you understand that now? So, many times, when you got married, you suddenly discovered that there are so many things that your husband is deficient in. And that is where you have your own specialization. Have you understood that now? Why did God do that? It is so that the socket that had been created when the rib was taken away, you may do what? Plug in. So the deficiency of the wife, I mean of the husband, is the sufficiency of the wife. Do you get what we are talking about now? So you see, what was absent in your husband is actually the reason why God was bringing you to him. It was not meant for quarrel. It was not meant for disagreement. So you don't even know how to do this kind of thing. That's not the issue. If he knows how to do it, you will be of no use. Oh my God, I'm not, I'm, I'm creating problem now. Eh? That thing that your husband doesn't know how to do, that you know how to do, 
It's not for you to criticize him. It's not the reason for argument. It is actually the reason for your relationship. His weakness is the reason for your strength. Madam, are we together? Eh? What was taken out of him was what God packaged into you for him. Every time you are not releasing yourself to him, you are cheating him. Because it is his rib that they took away in order to construct you. Oh my God. Madam, give him back his rib. <laughs> oh my God. Are you together with me this afternoon? What did you say? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, the first thing we are seeing here is that what used to be a problem is because maybe the husband does not know that no matter how he can speak big, big, big grammar, there is a loophole in him. And the only person that carries the solution to that loophole is not another brother. Are you hearing me? It's not another lady in church. And it's not your mother. Are we together? It's not your mother. And it's not your dog. You see, there are some men when they want to avoid their wives, they now develop a very big affinity for a dog or for a household pet. Then they'll be saying, I'm working with my dog. You are not created to work with a dog. <laughs> you are just beginning to confuse yourself. Some are talking to a dog as if it's their friend. No. No. A man that does not carry his wife along has a loophole in his life. Are we together? If a man is running alone, that's a fractional man. It's a fraction. There's a loophole in whatever he does. And the only person that carries the rib that can complete it is this woman. Are we together now? So, the point now is when God brings a woman into a man's life and they marry, God has supplied into that man's life what could be a loophole, what could be a weakness, what could be an omission, what could be, you know, a deficiency. God expects that every man that is married, his deficiency is the sufficiency in the wife. So for this cause shall a man, are we together now? Not a woman. It's a man who will do what? Who will leave his father and mother and do what? And cleave. Because it is in this woman that your bone is located. Those of you that are going away and just running here and there, you are not looking back for your wife. You are an incomplete man. Oh. Whatever you are doing, there is a loophole there. When you are finished sweating up and down, you will suddenly discover that there's something that is not here. Because she's not there to contribute it. Praise the Lord. So, now, what we have said together here is that actually in God's original plan, the plan is that the woman is not struggling 
to belong. There is a space for her. A correct husband knows that there's no anything else you can use to fill that gap. Except you want to get bacteria. If you try to graft any other thing, apart from your wife into that hole, you are in trouble already. So whenever you see a man who is not faithful to his wife, or he is running here and there and is trying to make friends everywhere at the expense of his wife, that man is only punishing himself. He may think he's enjoying, but honestly speaking, he's a man with a very big open wound. Open wound. And doctors cannot heal it. Eh? Doctors, they don't have what to use to heal it. Psychologists cannot heal it. Social welfare cannot heal it. The only person that has been ordained and equipped to fit into that loophole is this woman. So for this reason, shall a man do what? Leave everything else. Leave his father. Leave his mother. Your mother is good. Am I right? And I can see so many husband. They say, Kai, where my mother? Mm, my mother. <laughs> my mom. Uh, excuse me, sir. Your mom is a bone of another person's bone. If you cling to your mother, you are wasting your time. Tell your tell the brother that is by your side. Tell the husband, say, Oh God, just you better face the reality. <laughs> Help me tell you and say that's the bone of your bone. You better cleave to her. Cleave to her. You see that now. <laughs> In Kaula's wife, you say, Look, I'm the bone of your bone. You better, you better settle down. Settle down. Praise the Lord. That's okay. Now, we are noting, you know, what we are trying to establish here first is that in God's original plan, there is a space for a woman in her husband's life. God has created it. And that hole you see in your husband is not for quarreling. Do you know that there are some of you that one of the things that bother you is that you are very organized. You are the one that takes care of all the details as a wife. Everything is there. You are the one that fill up all things because that's the making. Now, the man you married... He can put one leg, one pair of his shoe on this side and throw another one there. And when he is going out, he say, where's my shoe? Yay! And you say, what kind of thing is this now? Huh? You don't know where you put your shoe again? But do you know, where are the husbands here? Let me see your hand up. Let me see your hand up. Thank you. Hallelujah. Anytime your wife travels and there is need to do something in the kitchen for the children, do you normally know where salt is kept? Talk to me now. Let's be practical. Richard, what normally happens? He will look for salt for 30 minutes. He's looking everywhere. But do you know that when your wife has traveled, if you call her on phone, 
I said, darling, we're looking for a particular pin. Uh, a pin for my shirt. What happens? He said, go to that place. Under the second drawer. <laughs> at the very back of it. You will see it wrapped in a black in a black cellophane, pull it out, you will see the pain there. Do you always miss it? Why was she so meticulous? Why does she remember little, little, little details? Because the manufacturer design. Are you hearing me? When Baba took away that rib and he settled down to construct a woman with one rib, you can now see all the meticulous things that God put in there. Woe unto a man who is alone. Excuse me, brothers. Let me trouble you again. How many of you are here and your wife is not here? Let me see your hand up. Please. Aha. Thank you. Now, when you traveled and your wife was not at home to pack uh, your load for you, she was not home when you were coming. You are the one that packed and you have arrived at Mtata. Did you bring everything you needed? Be honest, be honest. Talk to me now. <laughs> eh? Let that brother confess. What did you forget? What the brother cannot tell. Just raise your hand. Tell me what you forgot. Sorry? Yes, brother Richard. He remembered to carry the toothbrush but forgot toothpaste. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. He forgot his polish for the shoes. He has carried shoe but no polish. Yes, sir. I forgot the underwears. He forgot his underwears. <laughs> All right. No, I just, look, we are being honest now. We need to be honest. We are talking about practical issues here. Yes, brother, brother, yes. He, he, he came along with only one pair of shoes. He had to buy another one here now. Yes. You know the reason that thing that matches was taken out. He doesn't have it. You see, for a man, he was only made to see a future. Whenever a man is going somewhere, he sees where he is going. But how to get there doesn't concern him. It's only the wife that is busy thinking. Do you know, husband, sometimes you are going out. You're already sitting in the car. Blowing the horn. Let's go, let's go. I don't want to be late. You're always making somebody late here. Eh? And yet, when she enters the car, and you started sneezing, you say, hey, I forgot my handkerchief. Then the wife will open her back and say, I, I know you didn't take your handkerchief. That was what I was helping you to carry when you were shouting on me the other time. Has it happened before? Aha. So we are noting here that he who made them in the beginning made them male and female. And that, you see, what God did was to make a woman a fill-up. The wife is the filler. Husbands, without being insultive to you, your life will be empty if she doesn't fill it up for you. You will have holes if she does not help you to fill up. Hallelujah. There will be so many omissions, so many gaps, 
so many inexplicable emptiness. All because she is not there to fill it up for you. So this afternoon, I want you to look at your relationship. Now, as we are talking, there may be some people say, ah, but my own husband doesn't allow me to do anything for him. He prefers to go somewhere else. He prefers to run up and down, you know, eating soup from a strange women. What are we going to do about such men? We are going to take them to the place of God in prayer and say, Lord, you are the one that can make a man. You will make this man. Neither you nor himself is enjoying. Are we together? He's not enjoying. I want you to pity a man who is not going with his wife. So many, many issues that are challenges. You may see him wearing dark goggles and doing bold face. But that's a man that is shivering inside. He doesn't know what to do with his life. And a woman does not have shape. Even though you have details. But the structure that gives your life identity is in your husband. Even though you have become a career woman, you will soon you realize that no matter what a woman has achieved in terms of career, until her husband puts shape to what she is doing, it has no shape. Because the head of every woman is the man. And I want you to know that it's only in the head that all the signs of identity is located. All the sense organs are located in the head. When we come back tomorrow, I think we'll be dealing with that. So let's take questions. Or do you want to make some addition here before we, before we close the... All right? Now, contributions or questions or remarks before we go on. Yes, one lady is at the back there. Yes, one sister. Stand up. I want to know if you have the husband like that who doesn't told you or involve you in everything he do, what you're supposed to do about that? Hmm. What are you going to do about it? Now, let's first check. Let's first check. I think we need to check where the things began to go wrong. Now, tomorrow, when we start dealing with the role of the wife, the role of the husband, how to be a wife. She will be speaking to us. You know there are times that some men, they have withdrawn into their shell because the woman nags him too much. One of the problems that you face with a man is that he is, he is so much sensitive to honor. When a man feels that you are querying him, he thinks you are challenging him, he comes back, he's doing says, Why do you do this? Is that how to do it? Eh? Don't you think before you do this, those little, little, little words. Why do you do this? Is that how to do it? Didn't you think that it will not work out? You see, the man is not just seeing that you are trying to say, ah, we should have done it this way. What he's hearing is that you are such an unintelligent man that you are doing things without thinking. Ah! You see what happens to him? He either releases his manly muscle and say, huh? Before I marry you, I've been doing my things. And he goes away. Don't forget that out there, 
they are praise singers. That as he's coming back, they say, Welcome, sir. So that drives him to begin to be on his own. When we come back, we'll be looking at how do we win? What are the tips for winning our husband? And what are the wisdom to release him if he has already entered his cocoon? Are we together? You know, there are times a husband will come home. I'll be talking to you about husbands tomorrow properly. But there are times he comes back. He doesn't want to talk to you. So you just see him. He will just go and open his computer. He is pretending to be busy with the computer. When you want to raise an issue, say, yes, 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 yes. What is it? What do you, what, what is it? And because a woman by nature, we'll deal with that tomorrow. A woman by nature is given to details. For example, let me give you an illustration. We have started this meeting since uh, yesterday. Eh? If it is your husband that came for this meeting, Richard, when you go home, how long will it take you to report the meeting that you have started attending since Monday? Eh? Five minutes is enough and I'm going for a shower. Five minutes is enough. The husband, the wife say, how was the meeting? How, how is the thing? Uh, everything fine. We really praise God. In fact, God really spoke to us. Finished. The wife said, what happened? How did it happen? The husband said, oh, look, I'm telling you, in fact, the spirit just moved. We praise God. Ha! Ah, I saw Brother Gbile, in fact, we thank God. Finished. Now, if it is the wife that had attended a meeting just for one day, and you ask, how was the meeting? How long will the woman take to report the meeting? <laughs> eh? <laughs> I know you know now. She will start to say, in fact, when we started, the miracle began with when we started the journey. We took a car. <laughs> now the husband said, look, I know you took a car. So what exactly happened? Now the, the wife said, wait now, wait now, I'm coming. And then she starts again. And said, in fact, when we got to Umtata, they didn't get accommodation for us on time. We had to stay uh, somewhere for about two hours. And uh, Sister Pinky was running up and down. They were phoning somebody. I think that one of the hotels disappointed them. So they were telling us to wait. And Prof was going up and down to look for her. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that part of the meeting yet? Yeah. Now, the husband is so... <laughs> Before you know it, your husband has already started reading newspaper. So, sister, I'd like you to wait first. Begin to pray and say, Lord, show me the key to my husband. There's a key to him. I want you to pray and say, before we finish this meeting, give me a tip that will help me to unlock something. I know you will come back and give us testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, I think our time will not allow us to do more. We can only take a question from one man. If there's a man now. There's a man there, yes? Hey, Pastor. You know, I, I want to know, you, you said, whatever decision and, and, uh, and, and something or, or work that a man does without his wife, uh, God looks at it and puts a red pen. No good. Now, what, what I want to know is that <clears throat> I, I, 
are there no situation whereby God talks to you as a husband and maybe hasn't revealed that to your, to your good wife? What, what do you do in those situations? Why do you have to take a decision? Without the, maybe, maybe, your life, maybe God hasn't revealed the same thing to your wife. He has revealed it to you as a husband. What, what happens in that situation? I'm just thinking of uh, the case of Abraham when God says he must take Isaac to sacrifice. Did he consult uh, his wife? Or, because sometimes I do think, sometimes I have to, 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 to protect the feelings of my wife. So I have to hide this thing from her and go and do what God wants, wants me to do. Then I report to her thereafter. So are there any situations or are there any times that we have to, to, to take decisions without your, your wife? All right. <laughs> I thought he was speaking to you. <laughs> what I have, what, I mean, the way we relate, knowing that um, we don't have any power to, to make each other um, to agree or to come up to the understanding of one another without the Lord. What we do is, in such situations, we pray. We communicate to God who is able to open the understanding of the other one. There are a lot of you know, testimonies to that effect. You don't have to run ahead and just keep running and your wife is wondering where you are going. Because she, she has not come to that understanding. And you say, well, since you don't understand yet, just stay behind. No, you, you speak to God. The same God who is leading you can lead her. Can speak to her. Just be patient and wait. Instead of one going ahead to chase 1,000, two will chase 10,000. If you can just patiently wait for God. Talk to God about the issue. You will soon see God helping you. To carry your wife along. And before you know it, you'll be able to work together and partner together properly. Thank you very much. We will handle the rest tomorrow. Is that okay? But take this is from is from the right place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you very much. We are trusting. The reason why we are making this input is that the first institution that God made for his work to progress on earth is the home. And when the devil came to destroy the life of the man, do you know it was his home he came to? I was sure. Do you know that every time the devil wants to destroy, he destroys the home. There are many, many wonderful preachers who are now on their backs because the enemy prevailed to destroy them from home. And we know that what we are looking for in South Africa, a restoration, a revival, we will not go far if God does not heal our homes. And you will see that as we are beginning to discuss, there are so many hurts that we have inflicted on each other as husband and wives that is making the biblical standard of Christian family to appear almost impossible. And do you notice that the rate at which marriages have scattered is so much that it's difficult sometimes for us to say, look, this couple have been together for all their years we want to pray that beginning from our own marriages let God bring healing do you know God can bring healing do you know that this loneliness this aloneness husband goes this way wife goes that way 
and the children are completely disoriented. Do you know it's the work of the devil? And God who is saying, I will fill this valley with water, is able to do it. Maybe you are single. Not because you are not married, but you are separated. You just couldn't cope with the way this man is behaving. Maybe this man has become even so violent up to being physical. He's abusive, even physically. And you are saying, what is a marriage? Let him go. Let me pursue my career. I want you to know that God wants to bring restoration. You have tried in your own energy, but you didn't succeed. Can we submit our marriage to God? And say, Lord, since you are beginning to dig away rubbish, I want to present my home to you. I want you to dig something out of it. God is able to do it. God is able. So as we will be praying, as we will be praying, I want you to sincerely get to God and say, Lord, I'm not just looking for any. I want a restoration of my marriage. I want a restoration of my family life. God is able to do it. Husbands, God is able to walk. You're being alone, thinking alone is not good. The last question that my wife has just answered, I've realized that even when you think God has told you something, honestly speaking, God is not asking you to go without carrying your wife along. Two are always better than one. And if you patiently wait, somebody says, I think it's one of our local proverbs, he said the reason why a snake dies so easily is that he walks alone. Have you ever seen two snakes moving together? Eh? Eh, that's the nature of the serpent. It doesn't move with anybody. So whenever he enters a home, the first thing he wants to introduce into marriage is what? Aloneness. It will make you think alone. It will make you plan alone. It will make you weep alone. Only God knows whether there are not people here who have separated beds. He's sleeping on that side. He's sleeping on that side. Suddenly you hear him say, I don't want problem. I don't want noise. I don't want noise. I don't like noise. The wife has become noise. So you see him, but that's not going to solve the problem. God says, I will fill this valley with water. It might look so far. Some of you say, ah, <laughs> this thing that has spoiled for 20 years. Are you sure? We better forget it. What is in a husband? I'm already living my life. Honestly speaking, I know you have been living your life. But God say it is not good. I'm hearing someone say, what, 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 what do you want me to do? When he had decided to be irresponsible, can we take him to God? Can we take that matter to God? Husbands, can we take our marriages to God? And say, Lord, he help you say you want to give me. Please release it to me and my wife. I don't want to be alone again. Do something between now and the time we are going to finish this meeting that will give me a key for my own family. Shall we pray together? Let's pray together. Thank you.